Hi. Hi, everybody. I'm Loren Malloy. This is Jess Polito. And we are a crazy bitches talk show. That's right. Two crazy bitches talk about some crazy ass topics. And we want your input. So please make sure you're right in the comment section. We love taking your comments. Your comments will show up live on the screen. And um, we love talking with you. So please make sure to say hi and leave some comments in the comment section or on our Crazy Bitches Facebook page. Jess, how are you, my darling girl? I'm good. I'm good. I hope everybody participates tonight because we need some ideas for topics, what you guys like to hear. So we have something good to talk about. So oh, keep yeah. everybody engaged. So if there's any questions that you guys want to know, just type it on in and we will uh, discuss it. Yes, yes, that's right. And let me also say, please, please, please share the page, share the video, help it get around to more people so that we have more individuals getting to post and make comments and talk with us because that's what we want to do. The reason we're doing the show partly is so that we could all interact because I think there's plenty of us crazy bitches out there that have lots of crazy ideas that maybe are just like your crazy ideas too. And whether you're a male, a woman, non-binary, whatever you identify with, that's not what we're talking about here. Crazy bitches is like a soul tribe, okay? <laughs> Anybody's involved. Anybody's welcome as long as you feel like you're crazy in this world, right? If you've been called crazy while you thought your statement was completely sane, you are part of the crazy bitches, okay? Yeah. Welcome aboard the crazy All bitches. black sheep, welcome. Yes, exactly. The black sheeps. The ones that are saying stuff like, you know, crazy shit are going on in the world and people are telling you no. And you're like, could I be crazy? You're not. The world is. Welcome to the crazy bitches tribe. Yes. Welcome. <laughs> and it's true. I feel like one of the reasons it's so important for you and I to do this show, Jess, is like until you and I talked, we didn't realize how many things we had in common or believed similarly even yeah. though we come from very kind of different lives. You and I look different, talk different, do different things with our life. Like I write horror books and make horror movies and tell everybody what you do. By the way, what the hell is going on in the background? Are people dying? Are there parrots? What's no. in the background of your team? <laughs> are, what are you hearing? <laughs> I hear. <laughs> oh, that was the door. That, that was door it. is insane. It literally <laughs> sounded like is it still going on? Look at my eyes, everyone. They're doing weird shit. It's such an he interesting- He put the effort. lights out. Can you just fix them, please, the way they were? <laughs> That's what happens when you live- No, like, I already touched it. I, like, for the last half hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. Oh, no. <laughs> there you go. Okay, good. Right. My eyes are like, cloud up like I'm blind. Oh, man, sorry, man. <laughs> And there was this weird sounding like you ran a parrot shop that were dying you know, slowly. You know, okay, so also voices <laughs> ricocheting off of whatever is on my laptop here. So it's like I didn't know if that was that or the back. It's totally fine, but it was one of those moments where it was like, all right, I have to stop everything because I hear something. That's crazy. It was like I could barely hear it in my ear. Right, so I like think it really picked up on the, the and maybe what I'm also hearing is possibly the reverberation of me through your side occasionally. Are you hearing it now? Do you uh, hear me now? Yes, I actually do every time I finish talking. You do. All right, maybe if I put my <laughs> headphones in. Yeah, try it. Because right, right, right. <laughs> literally, like I'm so distracted. I wonder if the audience is distracted. Did you ever Are go you on your phone? phone? And you're talking to somebody really important and all of a sudden it's like um it's like you hear your voice echoing in the back and you're like i need to talk about my credit card bill and all i can hear is three in the background yes did you really just do that across your eyes i fucking love doing <laughs> <laughs> wait no 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 put it back put it back put it back <laughs> wait Okay. Okay. Oh. Do you hear the okay. I don't even hear it. You hear it. everything's good now. Everything's beautiful now. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. 
the squawking of the dying, squeezing parrot. I know. It was like, wait, 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 wait. I was like, you know, if this is the universe's way of telling me what I sound like to others, no, fuck you. No. <laughs> so you thought I was going to be like, I'm so sorry. And instead I was like, this is who I am. <laughs> and then I made I Don't face. have an apology about it. <laughs> I was actually thinking about that today. How often I say sorry because Women I have no other world. Mm -hmm. Right? <clears throat> like, I'll so say something or be weird. And then immediately I'm like, oh, sorry. The fuck am I apologizing for? Right, 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 right. I think women in general have that issue of apologizing for everything. And I don't know if it's just because we want to be sweet, right, kind, and considerate of other people's feelings. But I I don't know. I, I, I stopped doing that. I stopped doing that um, because I just am not anymore. I started and working on that too. You have to. After, um, you know, going through the things that you go through as you get older, I just became really exhausted about um, pretty much anything that that drains my energy. So I've been very selective about how I choose to um, use my energy and pull them around because, man, some people just suck the life out of you. And then you become like a real bitch. And you're like, listen, you just sucked all my life force out and I can't even be cool about it anymore. Good. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, energy vampires, they fucking suck. For I actually sure. just, um, I uh, have a subscription to Audible oh. <clears throat> and it's a, um, it's a it's a book service, and you just like it reads yeah, the book to you. And there is something on energy vampires, and I'm like, I cannot believe how many people in my life are energy vampires. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I really it, I give it the benefit of the doubt too, and I think that's what like really sucks me out because yeah. then they don't replenish it, and then I got to sit here with all these pieces and then try and put myself back together, like. All right, I'm going to go face my normal day after you just destroyed me. <laughs> Angel, welcome. He is absolutely right. Life Hi. force vampires are the worst. You're absolutely right. And thank you I for know. coming. Thank Yay. you. For page. To everybody that's watching, please like and follow the page. Invite your friends. Share this video. Help us get out there. Because these topics, although they sound crazy, a lot of us are dealing with them. And I don't yeah. give a fuck anymore. We're talking. It's 2020. Silence isn't golden. It's deadly. That's my new fucking hashtag. Silence yes. isn't golden. It's deadly. So the more we act shameful and secretive and quiet mm -hmm. about all these quote unquote crazy issues, the longer people can control, manipulate, and abuse us. And it's it's no more. Hell no, I ain't doing it. So that's one of the reasons that, you know, also for people, I am smoking a bowl. I am a medical marijuana card carrying member in New York. I legally get it from a dispensary. I went back to Cura Leaf today because I tried the Columbia Care and the motherfuckers wanted me to tell them what health conditions I have. I'm like, yo, fuck a dispensary. Don't mm -hmm. fucking matter. I got a doctor. Right, right, right. That's the doctor's job, not yours. <laughs> That's why right. I got this card. I already had to go through that process. Thank right. You. I was like, so I literally didn't fin out, fill out that entire section. And the woman read my face. She was like, oh, never mind. I was like, oh. yeah. I was like, yeah, you're not, you're not a doctor's office, are you? And when you like, say that. Pharmacy doesn't mean you're a pharmacy. And I said, but you know what it is? When I retell a story because there's so much annoyance, you hear all the yang, the language and all that stuff. I went up and you've, you've seen me do it. People yeah. who are watching don't well, know that I literally, you know, I'm very proper and I won't be rude and all that stuff. Cause I feel like it doesn't get your point across anyway. So I'll be like, Oh, you know, I didn't fill that part out because you know, the doctor already knows and it's not quite frankly, any of your legal business. Right. I said, so, you know, and she's like, Oh, no problem. See, if she was able to dismiss it, that quickly, it yeah. wasn't something that she should have asked in the first place. <laughs> Angel's right. Mind your business. Just mind <laughs> your business. I love you, Angel. <laughs> you understand? Hi, hon. Hi, Sid. He says, hello, Loren Hi. and Jess. Hi, how are you? Welcome. Guys, like I keep saying, please share the video so other people see it too. Share it in the group. Share it to your friends. Share it in Messenger. Share and share alike. Anyway, we're right along. But um, so when you see me smoking, please understand that everything I'm doing is legal across the board. Um, 
just for the sheer fact so that nobody can try to give me any problems over it. It's literally what saved my life, rehealed my brain, killed all the cancer that I had, allowed me to walk. It's one of the reasons I'm capable of talking. I mean, I have been one of the studies that New York has even used to prove that it works. This isn't tooting your own horn. It's really more about understanding that people like me do these things and still make seven books and coming out with my second movie soon. So this isn't something you do where you're just a lazy piece of shit. This is something that's been so, so much propaganda has been put oh my around God. it that like when you what see the the videos, remember the videos where the people were- What like do you mean the videos? TikTok? How about the movie? Oh yeah, I didn't even, I'm not, yeah, exactly. But like the one where like- the one there, it looks like they're melting into the couches or like, this is your girl. Place. I want to be there anyway. Right. But like <laughs> the fact that they will go that extreme with something shows like it heals so much stuff. Anyway. Oh, and the colloidal silver is working like a son of a bitch. Oh, I forgot to ask you about that. I didn't do much research on it, okay. but I was about to buy it. And then I was. Wow. Bitch, when I get paid again, I'm buying it for you. I'm going to start buying it for all my friends and shoving it down their fucking throat. <sighs> Okay, guys, Colloidal Silver, if you go to my YouTube page, I'm going to put the banner up more for anything else, not necessarily that you need to subscribe. Please do, because once I get to um, a million viewers, I'll be able to put up my first movie, Yield. Um, but more importantly, if you go on my YouTube channel, you'll see my video from the very first day I took the Colloidal Silver, which was uh, September 2nd. You'll see that within 20 minutes, I had my fibromyalgia pain go away. I had the necropsy pain go away. My lungs were better. I am doing so much better, dude. Like literally going up and down stairs. I don't even remember really. I have to keep reminding myself how bad it was. Yeah. This shit <clears throat> fixed stuff that doctors couldn't even figure out how to fix. Even weed wasn't fixing this like colloidal silver because the more research I did, the more I realized basically every medical condition we have is based off of some type of bacteria or virus family group. And what does the silver actually do? Okay, the colloidal silver in a lot of ways is kind of like incense smoke for bacteria in the air. Now, most people, I guess, don't realize that sage incense and most incense, the smoke of it, one of the reasons it was originally used is it collects onto molecules in the air. The molecules it collects onto in the air are always bacteria, virus molecules, as well as others, but those are the big ones. It's not oxygen molecules ever. So, what it does is actually been proven that sage incense is antimicrobial. So it'll kill viruses in your air. It's one of the reasons I tell everybody, start burning it. They go, but I have asthma or I have this. I go, it heals it. Yes, make sure you have ventilation. I get that. But so it literally grabs the molecules in the air and changes them and holds on to them so that it doesn't affect you. That's why you see in movies where they're swinging the incense in sick rooms. They weren't opening the windows, so there were morons. But they didn't know, and we know now. <laughs> Morons, but my frustration. Anyway, um, so if you follow that thinking, colloidal silver is like incense smoke for the blood in the body. It literally connects awesome. onto the virus and bacteria cells and molecules that are affecting every cell of your DNA strands, turning on and off different things. So... And you have to remember that just like there's humans, there's dogs, there's cats, there's different genus, genus categories and that kind of stuff as you go up the list, you know, like we might be humans and gorillas are also mammals. So we're both mammal categories, that kind of thought. So if you think of bacteria and viruses in different family categories, like you get a staph infection, there's an entire list of all within one family right? Each family does different kinds of things. Like certain ones will only affect intestines and et cetera. So you might get like, you know, diarrhea versus throwing up where another might cause like flesh issues, you know, different kinds of stuff. So the colloidal silver literally connects onto all those <laughs> and helps it flush out of your system and help reprogram and reheal the body in a new healthy environment. And what most people also don't realize because our education system doesn't want to teach us because then we uh, don't want to think for ourselves. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that um, every single molecule, organ, tissue, muscle, bone, follicle, re 
forms and it renews rebirth every single cell. And what that means is within like three months, you're an entire different person. In three months, you have a new liver. In three months, you have new lips, teeth, eyes, nose, everything, because every molecule and cell is so minute that's re-coming back. It's, everything has a cell of life and death. But in our body, the magic of it is that it keeps re-coming back. Now, the reason I'm explaining that long-winded bullshit is because when you have anything, let's say a Petri dish size of it, and you know you yell at it it's going to have a different result than if you talk nice to it same thing as if you take a unhealthy cell that's still dealing with its own bacteria source it's only going to make a new brand cell of the same kind of sick cell <clears throat> whereas when you're doing some form of other like colloidal silver or an alkaline based diet you are now giving the cell a new clean, like a Petri dish condition to reform back to its pristine original condition, like when you were born or possibly even better, depending wow. on all the stuff you do. Like my brain rehealed, my, my, my body rehealed, I'm able to walk again, all these things have been scientifically and medically proven between x-rays and everything else. What it is, is proving that all these different things reheal on their own. And depending on how you take care of you, that will either become a brand new healed, healthy, or in the same condition. But people don't want to wait long enough. So they don't realize it takes forever, at least three months, for a new cell to generate. Well, if all those new cells are regenerating and it has to keep changing up, it's like going from very dark hair to blonde. You can't do that in one process. You can't do that in one moment. You literally have to keep doing it so that it can keep changing over and changing over so that all of a sudden it's like eating a whole cupcake and suddenly having it brand new back in your hand. <laughs> That's kind of we only colloidal, right? It's kind of what colloidal silver is doing for the body. Same thing as an okay. alkaline based diet. It's giving you a brand new, sterile, healthy environment for all those cells to go back to origin, so which is the, an incredible concept. So the um the amount of time that you have to take it is two weeks at a time. And then you have to take a month off. Is that correct? Um, or you do it two weeks every, every, once a month. Well, what I'm doing is it says on the bottle to take it up to, for two weeks. After that, I believe you could start getting a heavy metal buildup. Yes, like that kind of thing without a danger zone. Because like if you read certain articles, like the minute I told my mom about it, her first thing was to go on and research the negatives on like <laughs> bad medical sites that you really can use. And it was like, it can turn you blue. And I was like, yes, because a family in Kentucky back in the day literally were blue and cannibals and hillbillies. Oh, and from the island thing. hunt. <laughs> That's my opinion from the silver content. Like literally, I think Get they were living. <laughs> I think where they were living in Kentucky had such a source of uh, colloidal silver, silver base in their water supply that wasn't under. I mean, who would go check that stuff back in the day? We're talking about. Oh, yeah, cars. and they wouldn't so, know to what to check for anyway. But you're talking about cannibals. I, I think they were actually because there's a whole storyline. I think if you look it up, um, it's Kentucky or West Kentucky. But no matter what, if you look up blue hillbillies you're not gonna miss it okay <laughs> and they literally wear a shade of blue that's why when we did yield i almost had everybody <clears throat> that was of that family a slight tinge of blue that's crazy but, who who would have picked that up though that's, that's a good, good one. one that's a good it one it would have been good but at <clears> this <throat> point all we would have gotten is people mocking going why are there smurfs running around that kind of unless i did this big storyline and even then we'd mock it going they're blue <laughs> you know, so that's why I didn't do it, but I wanted to based off the history of that family. So anyway, um, but so yes, there could be a buildup, but you take it for two weeks. It should be the 500 PPM, which is parts per milligram. Um, they have lots of ones advertised for 10 milligrams. That is wasting <clears throat> your fucking money. Anyway. Okay. So you take that's it for two weeks. And then I didn't research how long you need to wait, but no matter what, after a month, the levels have to be much lower. So in a month, I'm going to take it again and uh, keep doing that every month and see 
how much better my body gets. Cause I'm all, I also added the um, apple cider vinegar pills and um, because of the diverticulitis thing I got with all the intestinal issues. Um, and uh, I started taking that with my dinner. I don't have the problem anymore. I'm not laying sick for an hour and a half or three hours distended. Like it's a miracle thing. So the combination, I even lost like four pounds. Yes. Now, to be quite honest, though, I went from not being able to really do any exercise because this combination of oh, but the pain and everything. Letting you kind of move around more. And then I'm able to move around a little more. And the weather had cooled down just enough where I could be walking during the day. So I was able to walk around, though. The fact that I even was like, yes, I'm going to do this shows how much I healed because I know who I am. And, you know, so that's why I've been saying to everybody, like, go on my YouTube channel. You'll see it go scrolling across the bottom. Listen to me talk about day one of colloidal silver. Then do the research for yourself. But look into the holistic sites. I know that sounds outrageous, but I'm promising you, you'll get better information the more of those that you read on than the medical ones. And please don't ever, anyone, ever do WebMD again. Don't do that to yourself. Stop that. Or just one lookup. You got to research multiple things. I like how people, you know, troll on Facebook and they're, they pull up the first thing and they're like, see, I'm right. Right? <laughs> that reminds me. I was, I was working a con, a horror convention, and I had I miss them. Oh, oh, my God. I miss you guys. You know, hugging. <laughs> all my con people, I miss you. Um, this was weird. I shouldn't have done it like this. Uh, anyway. <laughs> hey. Angel, he wrote, yeah, I've seen that. The old dude looked scary. So he's talking about the uh, blue hillbillies and uh, also <laughs> Yield, shamelessly plugging Yield. Um, if you want a copy of Yield the Horror Movie, please uh, direct message me, Loren Malloy. Uh, email me, lorenmalloy at gmail.com. Either way, and I'll have it shipped to your door contact free because those yeah. are what we now in our <laughs> I'm not even going to do it. I did the quotes. We all know what the bunny fingers mean after that. The new blank blank. I'm not using the words. We're moving the fuck on. Anyway. <laughs> I'm not going there. Anyway. Uh, but where were we? The colloidal so, stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we were talking about Yield the Movie. So yeah. um, just to add to the Yield the Movie, my name is Jessica, and I am the owner of uh, – a sweet discovery. Um, I do um, designer desserts, so basically custom cakes, desserts, anything you'd like. I um, I did the skull cake for Yield the movie, and it is uh, supposed to look like the head of somebody with their face ripped off, and the family is eating them up. And I was told that it tasted good too. Hey, so I um, I specialize in uh, sugar work and anything extravagant and over the top. And uh, if you want to check me out, I'm on Ice Sweet Discovery on Instagram and Facebook. You'll see the uh, link scrolling at the bottom. Just Cake Shop is how I wrote it, but it's Ice Sweet Discovery <laughs> Bakery. Because this bitch is a little lazy right now. <laughs> Get out. Um, speaking of this bitch, I wasn't talking about her. She is not lazy in any fucking way. This woman made a face cake because I saw a picture of someone talking about something not even close. And on the phone with her going, hey, could you make me a face cake that we could eat on set in like three days? Yeah, thanks. And she did it to the point where when you watch Yield, because you're going to have to just to be able to see her epic face cake. When I cut into the damn thing, it literally sounds like you're cracking into a skull. And it was so good. Like, literally, there's a moment where we're all just, like, moaning over eating the steak. Like, <laughs> men were just, like, piggy style. Like, it was amazing. She's so fucking talented. If I could right now figure out how to put up a picture of this fucking cake for you, I would, okay? But maybe go to Yield, the horror movie, on Facebook, and you can find her picture of the face cake for sure. Also on Instagram, like I said, make sure you uh, direct I, message me, and I'll send you a copy. I just posted um, some fresh pictures, uh, recycled them up. So if you do go on my my um, cake pages, you'll see uh, the skull cake specifically in the newer, yes. the newer, um, yeah, newer pictures. 
Um, I'm actually looking right now for it. Where is it? Uh, oh yeah, there's like six of them or something. I think. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because I wanted, I wanted to show the 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 way that it was made too. So I showed the the pan that I made it in, but also the skull was made of white chocolate, and that's why it was able to crack like a skull. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So I actually, if I get all these off the screen for a second, I'm going to show you how fucking epic this cake is, guys. Okay. Let's see if I could do it. Um, Hold on. There's stuff everywhere on this fucking screen. All right. Um, I'm going to share the page. Let's see if I can figure out how to do this. Chrome tab. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm new. Welcome You're new here. Oh, I'm new here. Here we go. So this is my reposting of the face cake from Jess's A Sweet <laughs> Discovery Instagram page. Can you see it? Ta-da! Yay! See that? You got, already got five people going, holy fuck. <laughs> so that's the face cake. Uh, definitely leave it in the comments section what you think. Would you eat a piece? I do. <laughs> yes, yes. So this is the uh, the face cake that she made. You could actually check it out on the Yield page or click it and go to the Sweet Discovery. Make sure you follow both pages and check it out up there and figure out how to stop because I'm new. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and we're back. You yeah, snorted. It was <laughs> I did. I snorted. Mm -hmm. But only giggles. I snort only giggles. I really like that. <laughs> I don't know why. Why you're I eating like too? Giggles. No, no. That's what mommy's little piggy. I'm not that. Oh, oh I love that movie. <laughs> it's coming up after Halloween. Christmas is coming. I know. It's already been like, okay, so did you see the little video I made of um, someone's watching me and it's Santa Claus behind my shoulder? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Santa, it's not time for you yet. Go away. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? You go in the stores, man. They're already suiting up. I'm like, listen. Jackie! Yeah, Halloween to focus on. Hello, Hi, Jackie. Lovey. Jackie, please in the comment section write a uh, the name of your store and a link to it. I'm gonna post it on the screen, guys. She makes amazing stuff. She's an amazing woman. <laughs> she said that's badass to our recent comment. Amber, hello, sweetheart. And Angel wrote, "Hell yeah, that's awesome." Like <laughs> badass in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. If I could have, I would have just like made half the movie, just us cutting into that cake. My mom <laughs> watched the moment. She literally goes, Lauren, I can't hear that sound again. It sounds too cool. And I was like, I looked at her like, I her child. Cause like her answer was, it sounds too real. Think about we're Sicilians from New York. And her answer was, oh. it sound, it's just, it's, it's too real. And I was like, Ooh, good. Cause I looked sound effects up. I had to like, Break into bone. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what it sounds like. <laughs> or like cutting into the leg that I had to cut into. I found something oh. like the slicing into bodies because I was like, I can't contact the butcher. That's a lot of money. And he'd be like, you can't have me. I'll have you. No, just oh. um, have sound effects in the back room. <laughs> oh, I was, okay. Talk about weird moments for sound effects. But like I was stuck at a light. And I was under a bridge. I didn't have music on for like the first time really ever. And the sounds of all the cars going over was That's like scary. something out of a horror movie. It sounded almost like demons and I couldn't figure out what. And I'm just kind of looking around. And it was that moment where I wish I had like the boom mic because I just wanted to be that person with the thing like record it, record it, record it. You know, <laughs> so funny. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Oh, oh. Uh oh! Don't hate me. Is that Mama? Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. What are you doing? Don't hate me. I'm in a basement, so sometimes you have to kill bugs, <laughs> spiders. Ugh. And I was like, "You're." I literally kind of interrupted the show to get the can. Listen, I live in PA now, and. I know it's only, you know, a state away. <laughs> I can't what happened? On camera. <laughs> well, anyway, we have spiders. Like, we're in Australia here in nope. the sticks. No, nope. It is peaceful, good. and there's mountains and lakes all around my place, but... 
the spiders are large and the um the mosquitoes i i took a picture of this one mosquito which is so ginormous i was like i'm not even i'm only an hour and 30 from my original place of stay like how are these animals and bugs so much bigger you just froze I, did you see that I see you your boot no, I don't have eyes in the back of your computer. What's no, going I on? You totally just froze. Your whole screen froze, and then you're like, no. <laughs> anyway, I think I got it. That is the funniest. What was it? It was, it was a spider, but I'm not dealing Whoa. with it in my room. I'm like, I understand. Okay, so funny story. My niece is the sweetest angel from God, quite literally, in my opinion, because, like, you have to like take bugs and bring them outside. <laughs> and I didn't know that. And there were, <laughs> were doing whatever it was. And she was young and my brother was there. And my mom was there, you know, cause it's always like family visit, not solo. And, um, and there was a spider. So my mom, here. Why? Right. And my mom kills it. And my niece starts getting like hysterical. And she's like, Daddy, like she killed it. He goes, oh, we bring those outside in my house without missing a beat. I'm like, something comes to my house without permission, you kill it. I know, you were in my place of stay. And plus, <laughs> there's probably a guy around. No right? offense, but guys are so good at that. And no, yeah. no offense to women. You know what it also is? That's another one. See, that's another one of those where, like, it drives me nuts because I was saying it to my friend, uh, Mike. He He's the kind of person that would, like, pick spiders up, pick bugs up and move them. Like he was one of the people being like, no, don't kill it. I'll go move it. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay. Um, That's because we used to play with them when they were younger. And I don't we had that. dolls, guys. I we seriously had dolls and we did hair. It's just how we did. Can't believe I just did that on camera. Well, it's crazy bitches show. <laughs> she had a big old can and shit. <laughs> I literally like took my headphones off, rolled back. <laughs> like, <that> bitch, like. <laughs> I was like, what is she getting up for? <laughs> it must be important. Like, it was Pants. an invasion. It was an invasion. It was. Um, but anyway, one of the things that actually annoys me speaking about that whole like bug whatever thing as I was saying to my friend Mike I said okay it's it's kind of like a few things that bother me about it because one guys are expected to understand and know and be taught constantly what not is poisonous and what is not oh Girl, really well think about it how many guys do you know that could be like oh don't worry it's not poisonous or oh don't worry this That's that and yeah yeah From I see small that small little children it has always seemed to be this way that parents decide that girls won't be liked if they know or are able to do a certain bunch of shit like men or boys are immediately talked about and taught and the process is always learn how to throw a punch learn how to defend yourself that is not a fucking thing that women are ever taught they're not told you're taught like you should be a ballerina because then men will like you not you should take karate and defend yourself that is a yeah. norm the fact that we do not teach our little girls how to defend themselves. I and know. only time women ever learn how is after they've been harmed by a man 99% of the time, not trying to be sexist, it's just statistics. The fact that it's the only time anybody looks into it and says it's acceptable, then it's like, oh, you have a good excuse now. No, why do we need men to only know a group of things and only we know a group of things? Because the hunter gatherer, it's 2020 people. I know. Nothing yeah, I, I know some that. people, I know some men that, that, that feel like, you know, if you get hit, you can hit back. But they don't realize that they're just built bigger and no. heavier. No, that's and bullshit, it just, I can take a six it's just, it's like, my little, like, yeah, I could do some damage, and I have. But in comparison to a guy that's bigger, that's like an extra 150 pounds behind you, man. Yeah, but that's the mentality that you've already been taught wrong. If you think it matters how tall somebody is or how big somebody is or what size they are, you know you've what it already is? Not missed it. Because I think it has to do with thing? How who you were brought like up around. Down. Men look like upside down elephants a little bit. Can you say that again? They look like upside down elephants a little bit. The drums are on the wrong side. 
That's my new thought of the day. I was thinking about it. It's like, that's why they'd probably go back and forth so much. Because, like, <laughs> you're crazy. Like, what I, can do? I was like, you and elephants. You're just not yeah. gray yet. And you're big. Yeah. And but, but, okay, like, the first, first thing I got taught when I got taught self-defense, you know I have to legally tell people that if I'm going to fight them, I'm a le technical lethal weapon, and I have to tell them that before. You? Oh, yeah. Are you a psychically <laughs> lethal well, weapon? <laughs> After I got harmed, my friend who was a sensei was like, that's it. I'm teaching you everything. So I know how to take guns out. I know how to take knives away. I know how to take on a group if I had to versus... You do? Oh, Yo, yeah. I mean, you and me are going to spar. No, I can't do that because of the... I literally... I, that's why I don't play fight Take with anybody. silver. No, I literally like. Ugh, so, that. dude. So, what kind of training have you had that you have to actually be like, listen, everybody, I'm entering a room. I am a yeah, lethal no, weapon. But it's Beware. Like, and one of the reasons I also made sure I, I learned all of it, really, and it was from a friend of mine who taught me everything because like what, you saw like, what happened. Like how embedded in your mind is it? Is it like, like someone comes up behind you in a dark alley and you're like. <laughs> like a movie i, I mean oh <laughs> really yes but like it, it okay so one time my friend was almost like going to be Jason shot by Born. somebody we were in uh alphabet city and he was about to get shot in the face and i literally was able to move fast enough in front of him to move the guy and get the gun up and out of his hand and down and basically hogtied and the guy oh. was like you moved faster than I've ever seen any human move. And this I was weekend, like, and you were going to teach me one no, trick. I can't. That's another thing. I Girl, have to control. Teach I mean, me I how can to kill you, but I can't weapon. do like one on one because of my own issues. Oh, For no. I won't do one on one. You got to show me the move. Oh, no, I could show and you. And I'll just practice that. them on Al. And that's fine. Not his ass out. Well, I, I also don't condone that. Like, one of the things is I'm I never. Sweet. I technically don't need to do any real fighting because I'll talk everything out and explain how badly I'm going to hurt someone if I need to. But here's the reasoning. It is not They'll challenge you, girl. They'll be like, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? I'm not a man hater in any way. Most of my friends are guys. You know that. But it really is of how many, like you said, how many guys will be like, well, she acts like a dude. I'm going to treat her like a dude. and I'm going to knock her the fuck out. First of all, the statistic of women even knowing how to defend themselves at all is so small. That you're literally deciding when, okay, that's also why I'll get mad with some guys because it shows how negative a soul they are. If I look at a guy and I'm like, the answer is no, and he goes, yeah, okay, you're a bully. And now, or they call you a whole bunch of names and you're like, dude, I didn't even ask for that, man. You can't, like, I just said no. I just said no. And now yeah. all of these fucking. Everyone should and everyone takes a, You know what? Yeah. And I've been saying it for years, but part of the problem and the reason I even brought it up is society doesn't believe that it is feminine and sexy because our thought process is women should be able to not defend themselves, protect themselves, so that we need a man to do it. Yet rape is perfectly fine because otherwise, how come you know people can do it and get out in what six months? Um, I know it's uh, is now under the age of 12 or 10. If you're transgender, it's not rape. It's legal. Um, what? Watch, so watch. There is a, a thing on either Netflix or, or Amazon Prime. It's called Rewind. And this is why pedophilia can't be part of the norm or a sexual preference. There was a seven year old who was getting this, the rewind um, documentary was about a guy, a kid that was getting yeah, less than to trigger people. Okay. So. But at seven years old, he contemplated suicide multiple yeah, times. If a seven year old is thinking that obviously what is happening to him or her is not okay. Oh, yeah. The seven-year-old is thinking things like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, so, but you also have to understand that there's plenty of kids that were infants that it happened to. I was one. I've dealt with it. I live. Uh, girl. I'm between girl. Infested and raped. One of the reasons I don't even sing anymore is because a guy tried to choke me to death because I said no. I laughed at him until he couldn't use his own dick. And then I, I broke his face and laughed. So it, it's that's one of the ways you do it. I was taught that, and it was by one of my college professors. He's like, you need to laugh 
and find oh, the Oh, go after its ego. It has you to be because they do it. The R word, and that's what we're going to use because it triggers way yeah, too much. Yeah, I don't like hearing it anyway. Yeah, so I'm not going to say it anymore. But the R word is literally has nothing to do with sexuality. It has to do with power and control. Power. It really shows how bad and broken our society is at this point that the statistics of how many cases there are. Do you also know that the, the R word test kits, that every state gets to decide if they even test them or not? that there's no actual guarantee that the test kits get tested at all for any cases because they could be deemed not important. I don't that understand. there's thousands upon millions of Oh, because they, they think that women are crazy and they just say that at the drop of a hat yeah. if they get their well, feelings hurt. Well, sure, but that's a great way to gaslight. But it's also because of how many politicians and powerful people that probably would wind up in the system if you cross check it. So there's a woman off the show, um, Law and Order SVU. Um, I never say her name right, but she's been on the show forever, dark hair. She started an organization, um, Joyful Heart Foundation. And in the back of my Bedtime Killer book, because of all the research I did with this lust killer who's aring women, basically, well, it's after death, but it's still kind of the same concept. Next <laughs> Um, that's another so issue. Because of doing the research I was doing, I crack open a cold one. Um, <laughs> we found her organization, which she is one of the few people that de decided to start demanding that states had to test the kits. That was, you know, you know, getting donations just to get kits tested. So the fact that people don't even realize that they could go through that entire mortifying process of getting the kit done and have it sit on a shelf because, ooh, well. It's disgusting. So one of the reasons that I made sure I could defend myself and I'll stand up at a drop of a hat for somebody else is because if you're going to even be like, oh, yeah, you wrong, bro. Because that girl obviously in 99% of the cases has no skills of defending herself purposely because of how our society has deemed it. And you know that. I never so even thought of that way. Dominant. I never thought of it. I never thought of that angle. Because it's been happening, you know, for so long and, and a man is on top, you know, in, in a lot of almost every situation, you know, I never thought of it that angle. Yep. You're good. I, I, I feel like I'm so uneducated. Every time I talk to you, you bring up something, you know, that that's really going to help somebody. Well, I appreciate it. And you know, yeah. it's also people like I, there's lots of stuff that I don't talk about with most people because they're touch button subjects or it's going to get them angry or I know there were a few that we kind of decided not to talk about tonight because you know many people have issues with it yeah but I mean maybe we should just do it let's just talk about it anyway I don't know that's up to you but like really the big problem you know with a lot of the stuff is you know the crazy talk soul tribe really is all of us who had people decide that they were more important, more powerful, whatever, that their answers were right, that we were crazy, that however we wanted to be didn't fit in the box of what made them comfortable, which is why we started. Isn't that some shit? That's about, quite a like, lot. Of, like, I'll tell you right much. now, I admire you so much because you are very forward with how you're thinking. Like, for instance, we were talking about somebody the other day and you were like, she's blinded by their, their money. Like, you just flat out fucking said it. I would have yeah. never said that shit. Be basically because I wouldn't have, I wouldn't want to be the person that is, like, so shallow that, like, I'm seen as, like, only blinded by, you know, something superficial like that. But if it was true, some people really need to hear that so they understand mm -hmm. what they're doing because they're impacting other people by mm -hmm. behaving in those ways. So I feel like um, I don't have enough balls to say anything like that. I, and not that I don't want to be open and forward. I always felt, you know, I was always knocked down. Um, you know, no offense, guys, but... Uh, we're, you know, as women, if we uh, express our feelings um, or if we say the truth about something, it's gaslighted, in my experience, not every time. Not but by in, everybody. Not by everybody. 
it's a it's the whole mentality versus individuals yeah talking. or I, you know i was bullied a lot in school mm -hmm. because i would express how i felt and it wasn't okay to have those feelings you had to be a tough girl and you know you couldn't say how much you enjoyed spending time with somebody because they would be like oh you know weird about it um mm -hmm. Absolutely. so even just even girlfriends uh yeah, i would be their best friends at home but when we got into school they had to put this you know front up and i really mm -hmm. found out that it wasn't okay to express how you really felt especially if it was positive yeah and you, that's why you know sorry so much that's why we say sorry so much it's um it's, it's unfortunate you know I, I it hardened me to a degree where um you know i'm reserved when i'm around new people and i can't express who i really am and i may come off as a bitch you know how many people have told me i'm unapproachable it's not because i am unapproachable <clears throat> it's because i don't want to say what i'm feeling because i feel like you are going to judge me for it mm -hmm. oh absolutely that's exactly what it is and like you know i, I absolutely agree with you because i have the same fucking shit but also you know, it's, I would say <laughs> there's, I'm about to like beat on myself and I'm not going to, so I'll stop myself there. But my problem always has been, not only that was I always bullied, but because of the way my father was, which is a raging alcoholic and a very abusive man, uh, thank God he's not in my life anymore. Um, he made me feel like it wasn't okay to defend myself but i had no problem defending others because i constantly had to do it and that's something we always mind, put someone else first so I we're all we have man when everyone dies around us we're the only ones left standing and we got to take care of ourselves go ahead but when we're small children when we get constantly <clears throat> made to worry about somebody else's needs or desires or fears like you know, when you're in an abusive childhood, like, even if it doesn't seem like, like on the outside, for me, I was constantly trying to, like, make my dad laugh or smile. And that's why I'm always so, like, over the top sometimes entertaining others. Like, I feel like a need to. Because if I kept him entertained, maybe he wouldn't beat us. Or maybe he wouldn't make my mom cry. Maybe he wouldn't kill us tonight. You know? And then I would have to go to school the next day being like, Oh, that's funny. horrible, man. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. we he would make us take pictures after, like, throwing fits, breaking things, making us cry hysterically in public, make us take a picture on Christmas so that we could remember how sh shitty we were for the rest of our lives. Like those kinds of fucking things. Like that's my childhood. So even trying to date when people are like, oh, I don't have good stories. So it makes it very difficult to date anybody that's had a good life, which is why I used to only pick bad people because then they could identify it. But then I was like, wait, <laughs> you know? But like part of the problem is when you have a childhood where you're constantly worrying about the adults and the parents versus you. Oof. All you're thinking about is somebody else. You're not taught that you're even allowed to. So I got picked on. I got beat up. I got all sorts by other kids all the time. But the moment you messed with one of my people, oh, hell, I was a bulldog and I'll take you down. Me too. Yeah. I'm a pit bull. I'll go after you. Yeah, it was first grade where I threatened a fifth grader that while the bus was moving, I was opening the back door and kicking him out. And nobody would notice until we got to school that his body got run over by the car behind us. Shutting the fuck up. Is that the truth? So wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you push someone out and they got no, ran no, no, over? No, oh! <laughs> because he was picking on a special needs kid on our bus. So here I am, first day of school, first day of first grade, on the bus for the first time. I sit down in the back because it was the only spot because God put me there. That's my opinion. Absolutely. And I'm looking across and the guy in fifth grade is bending over the chair at the kid in front of him, has a little lunchbox and big glasses and is crying. And you just keep hearing the little kid whispers, please stop, just stop. I lost it. I looked at him and because I'm looking around trying to figure out why nobody's taking care of this. And the little kid triggered me based on what I know I used to cry at my father. So, boom, now this motherfucker ain't hurting nobody because I can't stop my dad, but I can stop this little fucker. Because when I was in preschool and so kindergarten... there's heat behind it, too. Uh-huh. When I was in kindergarten and they taught us, like, how the bus works, they showed us that in an emergency, you can open the back door and jump out. My scary ass in, like, kindergarten goes, <laughs> oh my while the bus God. is moving, you can do that? I was like, wait, like, once the bus is, like, off, like, does it have to be off or can it be on? Like, what happened? I acted all scared, and my mom was, like, squinting at me. 
<laughs> so then I went back to first grade, first day, in a little white fucking dress, right? Of course I am, with a big white bow, looking all like mom's trying to make oh, me look I like an angel. You. Right? I'm not innocent. So You're literally, right. I look at him, I'm like, if you don't stop picking on him, I am going to make sure I wait until the moment the bus is going as fast as possible. And then I'm going to throw you off the fucking back of the bus and hope that car runs over your fucking body. I said, nobody's going to be able to save you before you're dead. That, and he's like, oh. I look at the kid. I go, hold on a second, kiddo. I'm like, bus driver, pull over. Lost my mind. I stand up. Bus driver pulls over. What? I'm like, we're moving seats. Assign fucking seats. Fifth graders, front of the bus. Swear to God. Swear to fucking God. I'm not making up a word. I tell all the kids in the front of the bus, get back here. I make that kid come sit next to me. And I'm like, this is assigned seats from now on. I said, you're picking somebody else to fucking throw you out of the bus. Let's wow. go and go to school. We get to school and the principal Girl. is like already waiting because the bus driver had a call when you pull <gasps> over, it shows. They're like 10-4. There is a crazy girl on the bus. <laughs> the little kid looked at me. He's like, thank you. I'm like, no problem. Nobody should pick on Aww, anybody. That's fantastic. Bravo. <laughs> First day of school, and the principal just looked at me, and I was like, hi, I'm Loren. <laughs> like, going to go like, he's like, wait, wait, wait. Oh, what you're so like, out. Aww. Yeah, I looked at the fifth grader, and I was like, see that kid? Nobody stopped him from picking on him except me. I said, and I didn't even touch him, did I? I used my words, didn't I? Just like mama taught me. You went, okay. <laughs> well, at least she said it and didn't do it. I, I was, um, I was actually sexually assaulted on the law. Like, okay, so I didn't know this was sexual assault, but when I was in, um, sixth grade by an eighth grader and his mother was a social worker so he specifically i think was doing this i'm not sure i can't say why yeah, um but i was on so, so he 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 spit some spit out of his mouth and he wiped his spit and then wiped it on my chest and then put his hands down his pants and wiped it on my mouth and I went home and told my mother this, and I was like, am I going to get, I was more concerned about getting sick because of the germs, not mm -hmm. because I knew of anything of it. Mm -hmm. And it became this big fucking thing. I was so embarrassed. Of the, he had to be, my mother made the mother and him sit down at our table and apologize to me. And his mother said, if you need Nick for anything, you, he's going to be your guardian angel. He's making this up to you by protecting you. Thought that was a smart move. She should have lost her life. Well, guess what? This kid stayed away from me never he didn't protect me if anything well, no that was um, my, he would never away. you know make eye contact me and this yeah. whole time he thought i like tattled on him and i was just asking my mom if i was gonna get sick and yeah. she's like why would you say that and i was like well a kid put his hand on his pee, pee and wiped it on my mouth and she was like that's it like yeah. everybody was involved like I didn't you can't even imagine know. what I would have done. You can't imagine if I was your mother. Oh, well, you, I mean, you know, she she's she's an amazing woman. I have to say she really okay. always had my back, even though, you know, I have my shit with her and yeah. and whatever else. But this woman knew what was right. But yeah. unfortunately, I wasn't taught any of that. And I really I have to say I had a charmed life. I um I, I came into contact with things that um they taught me lessons, but I, I, I wasn't scarred by them somehow or somebody watching over me helped me release that because I have nothing resonating. That's you know, awesome. I don't know if it was because I was so uneducated about the world. No, no it's part of that. I didn't I didn't understand it well enough to even be impacted by it. But I, guess, um, but I just see it as part of who you are. There's an inner strength level where it's like, this is not going to change who I am or affect me. It wasn't important. It doesn't matter how sexual it was. It could still be like, you're not important enough for that to matter. And you have an inner strength that you don't even seem to realize. Like you have done pinup modeling. You know that I don't have any level of self-confidence to do that. 
Okay. I didn't either at first. A but, lot of that w is for the photographers. They do a really <laughs> good job directing, and and but I was assaulted by one of the 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 photographers and that made me feel very uncomfortable. And I stopped doing work with him, even though he's the one that got me started in all of this. Um, yeah, that didn't scar me either. Um, Simply because I understood he probably has some issues at home, and um, wait, wait, are, are you are you making allowances? Nope, not at all. I okay, wasn't affected like enough. I wasn't affected like enough by it for me to hold any grudges. It, I was affected by it in a way where I understood this guy's got issues. I'm just going to do my part and step back. Because he simply can't control himself, whether I talk to him about it or not. So I did say things to him, but mm -hmm. then I just stepped back from it. Um, but I do have to, um, you know, he got me into it. He got me noticed. I was published in three magazines, mm -hmm. you know, me. <laughs> but... <clears throat> You know when we're done talking on the show. Oh, don't get on me mean. about it. Listen, <laughs> I, like I have, I have jars waiting for these motherfuckers. I have um, I, I have a people. psychology degree um, because I have to understand why yeah. these people have done these things to me, so yeah. that I don't beat myself up about it because it's yeah. not me. No, you know <laughs> it's them. But it took me years to understand why. Yeah. You know, and a lot of studying. Yeah. You know, these, sure. these, these people. That's, that's the only reason I even know anything. These, like, these people have issues, and you're not going to be the one to save them because they're dangerous people. Mm -hmm. So oh, just yeah. do yourself a favor and just step back once you identify the issue. Clarity, so, you show up just like an angel, you psychic fucking angel queen, you. Hi, Clarity. Everyone, Hi, this is clue. Puerto Rican witch. Clarity is the Puerto Rican witch. She will. She is incredible. By the way, girl, just between you and me and the world, the <laughs> shit I ordered from you has already been working. Yes, girl. All right. Well, now I got to know. Love you. So, hell fucking yeah. <laughs> um, everybody look up the Puerto Rican witch. You want to look up on her website. Look up on her website. Now I'm going to look it up right now. Come on. Seriously, she has community jars, she does prayers, she does spell work, she takes care of all those left-handed stuff as well as right-handed, and she is fucking amazing. Plus, she is probably one of the most golden-hearted people that I have ever come in contact with. Aww. So, she Thank you, Clarity. Yeah. Oh, there it is. I love you for knowing to put that there. She put, Thank you. Uh, the Puerto Rican witch .com. It's All up right. on the Puerto Rican witch um, She has helped me with so many things. And one of the things that I can say that she's helped me with, and I'm fucking super proud, is she's helped me with my own self-confidence self -confidence and self-esteem levels. Like, you have met me before Clarity met me, Jess, and you knew how messed up I was when we first met. Like, you and I was <clears> going <throat> to come get me out of the bathroom because I was crying because somebody gave me a bad review. Listen, I still remember the review. That shit is normal. That's no problems, girl. But like, it's a normal human before. thing. Remember, I was like, I never had anybody really do that before. This is like a weird new, like, that's what girlfriends do for each other. I was like, <laughs> oh, of course, not even that way. Or, um... And uh, <clears throat> I still remember the review. The woman had wrote about The Very Devil Herself, my first book. And I remember we were all sitting at that that restaurant table. There was like 12 of us. Or I know. Of us, and I all of a sudden was about to start crying. And I was like, I'm going to use the mail. Because I couldn't finish my sentence. And the review was, <clears throat> I'm so sorry about this, but I tr I read your book three times. And I still couldn't find one solitary good thing about it. So I'm not going to post a review to try to save your own career for you. Good luck with everything. And hopefully one day you'll figure this out. Get the fuck out of here. Uh -huh, and I remember I was telling you guys. And then. Um, if she's not going to post a review, why even make that comment? Bully? Right? She emailed me. She took the time to fucking email me. Um, and I remember one of the dudes at the table literally said to me, he's like, she read it three times. 
He's like right there. Like, let's be quite serious. Yeah, you seriously. You would have found minutes. out the first time and then the second time. You yeah, didn't you do it. You there. don't read it three times and then nah. be like, you hate it. You she must have like liked it. <laughs> if, she, if she really read it three times, she liked the shit. Right. And oh, just wanted to be a jealous person. Stay safe. Angel is a truck driver. So please oh, please. Angel, why are you leaving? Angel. Uh, Angel's a truck driver, so can we all say either prayers or send good energy, whatever you believe in, to keep him and his truck safe because it is one motherfucking hard job. It and is. I, it hella, hella. And I, I know sometimes he's got some stupid shit he's got to do. You guys are a different entity. God bless you for having Remember, that. Remember, everything that's in every sure. one of your fucking stores that you want to buy is because a truck driver got it Thank there. Thank you, Angel. So, Angel, please stay safe. We yes. love you. Yeah, review, uh, the clarity, that review was so I know. Funny, but it was the very first one. And my first thought was, you know, it's almost like you know you're winning when you got haters. I mean, at this oh, point, yeah. I'm surprised I'm not A-list considering. But She took um, time out of her day to write that shit. So, right. yeah. <laughs> um, oh, you're so welcome, Angel. You know I mean it. I'm always checking in. Um I'm one of those, like, Sicilian weird den mom parent things where all of a sudden Sicilian I'm like, Sicilian here, too. Kids? I know you have a, I, I know you're fine and you're a grown ass adult, but I did that to my friend Charlie. He's like over 50. And the other night I was like, did you get home okay? <laughs> oh, no. That is a being a, a caring woman and human. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. So make sure you look up the Puerto <laughs> Rican witch. She'll help you out. And she does have some awesome free stuff, I think, in the community jar section that can help you out. I've had some people do it and have phenomenal results. If they were my stories, I would tell. But like I said, one of the results I got was um, all of the campaigns that I have been running for the Devil's Lettuce has gone over and beyond the goal. Yay! I saw that! Congratulations, Loren! Yay! Thank you. And I gotta do a shout out to Clarity because I tell her, like, listen, I'm stressing about this. Can we work something out? You know, and her prices are phenomenal. This woman not only does incredible work with a guarantee from me, honestly, not her, but anyway. Um, <laughs> but she has better prices than I've ever heard. And most of the people besides her are pretty damn fugazi. There are obviously I other know, experts out there, but... Um, oh, you're literally the best, Loren. Oh, I'm F coming you. after you, Clarity. You better watch out for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Clarity. Yeah, she wrote, uh, you're literally Aww. the best, Loren. Fuck the haters. Yes. And, and she knows, me and her have been talking about the haters, and I've been teasing. I'm like, at this point, there's so many fucking haters I can't stand that I'm already on my second feature <sighs> film and, like, three shows in. That is like, how come I'm not A-list already if I have this much haters? No. You like, have a cool. lot of strength, and I swear, I wouldn't have been able to do it. As soon as I got that bad review it would have shut me down <laughs> she said come over Justin. i will <laughs> clarity she already adores you i don't know if you can tell but jess wants to hug your head i can feel it <laughs> just so you know she literally it was like i'm coming for you because i want to hug your head and like give you kisses and like just go wow your epic i'm like the liviest deviest person i swear <laughs> so i was nominated like the best hugger a oh. couple years back by by Al's friend and ever since I made sure that I put that effort in to every hug it might feel a little tight it might feel a little couple extra seconds longer but when you embrace somebody always try to push that light into them yes by giving them a, a, a solid hug if you're going to if you're going to hug somebody make it meaningful and when you shake someone's hand, make it meaningful. You want to connect with these people. We are the, we're here to help each other. As human beings, being a human is really difficult. So when you find someone that has enough energy to express those hugs and give that firm handshake, you know that you got someone solid on your side. Yes. Sure. Hu hugs back to you. Love. I love hugs. <laughs> hugs are so healing. And she's right. A friend of mine, he, uh, I, I just knows and clarity knows i don't know how much of the view, viewing audience knows that i really am probably one of the least judgmental people you'll get because i don't care 
how much melatonin you have. I don't care what your nationality is. I don't care if you have a gender or not. I don't care what drugs you take for the most part. As long as you're safe, as long as it's consensual, blah, blah, blah. That, those are basically whatever. It's each individual on their own path. So the reason I said that is I have a friend that loves to take things like mushrooms and, and trip and stuff like that. So he's a giant bear of a dude. And I had come over because he's like, I'm tripping balls so hard right now and I'm way too alone. Can you come over? Aww. And I'm like, yeah, I do that for my friends. I, that's one of the reasons I used to hang out in trap houses and stuff is like to keep an eye on people when they were doing drugs. Cause like, otherwise you'll have people ODing all the time. So like I had no problem being a den mom. Although you'd always get stories thinking that I was doing all sorts of crazy shit. I didn't Be really careful. care. Cause yeah. like, you know, so I, the reason I brought this up was he's like, I'm tripping balls. Just, you know, I need a friend. And I, so I drove over, I put my shoes on, drove over and he goes, can I just have a hug? And I knew I had to send like, he's like, it'd be like the best mom hug. And I was like, okay. Oh. <laughs> so like, like this big hug. And I tried to like put as much like loving, like maternal, feminine, whatever, good energy into, he's like, wow, it was like the best mom. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You have it in you. Yeah. And give it. And you do. You do. Yeah. Yes. It was just like, can I have like the best mom? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, that's one of those drugs where like people are usually just so funny or interesting or just zoned out that like. No, I feel me. like they're zoned. They are zoned in it, <clears throat> in a sense. But I feel like they're super receptive. I will never give up. I will never redo those days. I feel like those open doors that have I have I didn't even know existed. Yeah. And it made me such a loving and understanding and accepting person. Oh, that's awesome. I'm um, forever oh, Clarity wrote, I I want to scream it to the world to let them know all all know how wonderful you are, Loren. You're so loyal and non-judgmental. Knowing you would make anyone's life better. Scream Aww. it in the world. Scream it into the world. Thank you for putting that out there. Because <laughs> putting that out there makes it more realistic. Yeah. And, and it's, it's not just a feeling anymore. Else. Now it's out there. Yeah. And it's nice because it's also somebody else there. It's not like my co-host who goes, you know, I mean, you saying it is one thing, but you can almost see like some people out there being like, it's because she's co-hosting. What could she no. say? I fucking hate you and the world hates you. <laughs> like, so, I be, no, so put it this way. I wouldn't be a co-host to just anybody. That's I don't do anything but bake and clean my house and cook dinner. You know, <laughs> like I'm not going to like spread my energy around if it's not that's not true it. we have something to talk about what you in something this weekend by the way Clarity, <gasps> love you um yes you are you are in something this weekend we are seeing yeah. each by the way can i just tell you i just realized we're seeing each other this weekend <laughs> i've been so fucking <laughs> it's only a few days away da, da, I da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it was like in unison, but like opposite. It was beautiful. I thought it was doing so much better. Look how weird my arms look. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, shut up. Up. Holy fucking shit, we'll have to go live at least for a few minutes. Yes, and I'm going to bring you guys goodies from my baking experience. Yes. Um, and uh, I can't wait. I'm going to be. One of the, can I say? I'm going to be yes, go ahead. I'm going to be DD, and I think I am one of the stars yes, in what? the, yeah, yeah. So I'm super excited. I have limited skills as far as acting. I did a lot when I was younger, but I'm going to have to be fully directed by Loren. <laughs> she will be. I am a little I, modest on as far as expressing myself in a fake way, but she's going to teach me how to be an actress. No, let's fix that statement completely because I already said to Jess, so I'm going to kick her butt when I see her. <laughs> but she is like like downplaying it a thousand percent because I literally went through about 150 people and I still knew that Jess could kill this part. All right. Once I'm going to kill it. I am. Like, look at people and see what jobs that they could do best. I've always been able to do that. I mean, I was a little kid looking at people being like, you know what I would be really good at? And now they're doing that with their lives. Awesome. So I looked at Jess and especially since you were there, like we said, for yield. <laughs> so 
Um, by the way, guys, The Devil's Lettuce, the movie, it says donate now. There's a link at the bottom. If you go to that link, um, we still have two or three days left that you can donate, pick a perk through there. There's IMDB credits. There's a thank you, an associate producer, and a producer credit. Um, we only have two or three days left. Did I hit a Yes, this is going to help feed us. This is going to help with the makeup. This is going to help us make bloody gore. Yes. This is going to help us uh, find locations and uh, get whatever permits we need and the insurances that we need to make this film possible. Very, so very, li it, very little, if any, goes to the creator or the creators of this film. This is yeah. just to help us film the actual thing. So this is donations. Please, you know, you know, be be kind and and if you have an extra five bucks or something, just throw it in there and like cut off your coffee for a few days at Dunkin' Donuts and give us some some extra Twinkies to shove down our throats while we in between all these scenes while we're freezing to death <laughs> in a graveyard no less. Or I'm going to show everybody something that's going to be in the movie. You ready? First time ever anybody's going to see this by the way. Jess hasn't even seen this. So what? 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 Uh oh, here she comes. What's coming next? What's coming next? Is this what we're smoking out of? Yes. Does he come apart? Or are we going to do it out of his eye hole? No, we do it out of the back of the skull. And then we're going to smoke it out of the nose. All right. And it's going to be an item you can buy in our next Indiegogo campaign that we're going to be You can have a smoking apparatus skull. Yes. It's called York. From Shakespeare, alas, poor York. I knew him well. Oh no, he's uh, tiny. Uh, what a tiny head he has. Right, that definitely didn't so weigh eight pounds with a brain head. in Actually, it. Actually, we're gonna have it uh, be a children, a child's head because Al and uh, Nelson, Nelson Moss, That's did the artwork for uh, the Devil's Lettuce poster you'll see on the page, and as well as the IMDb page. Um, he also was in Yield. And uh, he will be playing Ace in The Devil's Lettuce. He actually has his own company, Geek Emporium. He makes all sorts of incredible stuff. Yes, um, unbelievable. He also makes glass pieces, and he's going to be making the smoking apparatus. I know I keep that saying comes. that, but I don't know what else to fucking call it. So it's going to be a bowl. It's going to be a, a skull bowl. I know that. Yeah, was no, smoking apparatus, apparatus is proper. It's just one of those weird fucking, like, I couldn't stop saying it. It's a smoking apparatus. <laughs> So everybody will be able to have their own Yorick. But yes, oh. alas for Yorick. Yes. So this weekend we'll be filming. Oh, yeah. Yay. You guys will have a trailer to see soon. But it's going to be great. And as everybody sees, the link is at the bottom of the page. I also put it in the comments so that you can actually click it instead of trying to, like, copy and paste it properly. Because we all know it's freaking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so we'll be able to have... Uh, a skull bowl that they smoke out of when the actual bowl breaks and we have somebody that will be making uh, custom bowl pieces one to smoke out of one to break before we discover the child's head bowl because remember um, Al it will be playing the other part and so it will be him and Nelson that's smoking out of it so because they're such big dudes it'll look super tiny in their hands and one of them will be awesome. up, like you know, oh my God, what is it, a kid's skull? Maybe I'll have you say that probably. Okay. Um, just to like throw it in as like an extra little thing, it'll be fun. Okay. But, um, and then the next campaign for the Indiegogo that we do in um, spring, we're gonna start it after for, um, Valentine's Day, because let's get through all those ridiculous holidays first. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we'll do another campaign because we will be uh, filming more in spring as well. That we have, so many cool things coming up. I can't wait, but we need a lot of contributions because film insurance is stupid expensive. Oh, very expensive. I can't believe important. how expensive. I mean, it is, it's super important. And you have to cover everybody just in case we get hurt. Right. And we do. We, we are have, doing a lot of killing. The film insurance. Um, that's one of the reasons, you know, thank you everybody, the Indiegogo that has, you know, put money in because we were able to make sure we got the film insurance in time so we could start filming. Um, 
and you know we're going to have to accommodate people in hotel rooms and feed them in the spring and all these other things that that's why we're going to be doing another one everything costs money and i know money's tight for everybody but there's going to be interesting enough perks coming up we even have another woman and a company who makes edible cakes who's going to do a cake um auction kind of thing that's, that's going to have a specialized cool. one and then me and jess are going to talk about something she's going to do <laughs> I'll wait until she's really drunk. Al, oh, don't listen. No, just kidding. <laughs> Any Tuesday night. You can tell me. <laughs> I mean, nobody really wants pictures of me in my undies, but they probably would be like, yes, Girl, please. there is a market out there for your panties. <laughs> I don't know why I had to say panties. I think that's one of the defense mechanisms immediately is to make a joke out of anything that might be uh, like, ooh, whatever. me. Um, so I realize I do these things. I'm like, that's weird. Anyway, so I, <laughs> in, uh, I found a crystal that a friend of mine gave me, and I just think it's really cool. I want to see if you can see it on camera. I know, total side statement, but so if you can see it, like no, no, no. Okay, so hold on. If you could see, this side is kind of like purpley. Yeah. There's like two like weird little holes, and then it's pink with purple wow. in it. Oh, what I is that? It. So it's an actual tourmaline. It's so cool. Agate. Looking. Okay. Agate comes in all the colors. Right. It comes in all the colors. Um, but I wanted, you know, shout out to my friend Joanna because um, Thank she you, actually Joanna. gave this to me. I want to see if like if I use the light. It, it, I know you can really light. see it. Oh, can wow. It, it almost swirl through it. Hold on. Wow. I'm trying to break it and drop it. But see all the different swirls? That's actually why yeah. I was doing the light thing because I wanted to see if you could like. Yes. Yes. Sorry, guys. I know it's weird that I'm doing this. I see it right there. Right there. Right. Yes, right there. Right there. Nice. Right. So, like, that side has all the different lines and, like, purple kind of through it. So, I was looking it up, and, like, she literally has her own magical abilities, this girl, Joanna um, Stefan. I hope I said her last name right. Oh, my God. Uh, I never do it. Anyway, um, she, you know, has her own magical abilities because she literally like reached into this thing that had all different stones in it and was like, pick one. And I was like, oh, I don't want it. And she handed me this one. I look it up and it's all about self-love and self-confidence. And you, like, you need that right now. Use and all this stuff. So like literally it was just kind of such a cool thing. And there's like this weird little gouge, but I've been carrying it around the last few days and like holding onto it or keeping it in a pocket. And, um, I've like, the reason I even bring it up was today I was driving. I, there's nobody in my car with me. Nobody I'm on the phone with. I said something stupid, silly to myself and then apologized to no one. <laughs> Your typical woman. Right. So then I realized like what I was doing and it was actually the first time I realized why based off all the childhood, whatever, but I had this in my hand. So it was like, you know, that's pretty cool. So, you know, I know a lot of people find it stupid or weird or crazy, but crystals actually do work because if you think of every molecule is on a different frequency, then the frequency that you're connecting with would have to affect your environment. Yes. And that's how one of the ways you can reprogram why people use crystal grids and all sorts of different crystals. And that's why I sent you those videos with that woman, Luna Nate. Um, because she uses a lot of different crystals and stuff too. So I learned a little bit and that's even why I even looked it up. So it's kind of a combination between Joanna and um, that woman Luna Nate on the um, YouTube was because she was talking about stuff. All of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, I right now give a shit about this crystal. <laughs> yes, see the Not difference? Like before because it came mm -hmm. from her. So it was an item from a friend, but it was more like, oh my God, let me look into. No, yeah, once you see the difference and you can, you know, you could see that it actually works. Yeah. That's a that's a big hi, thing. Gary girl. She says hi, ladies. Hi, welcome, welcome. Please, everyone, share the video around. We've talked about so many crazy <laughs> topics that no matter how many times you watch it, and I hope you do, uh, <laughs> you'll find something new. And please remember, for next Tuesday, we'll be on again. And yes. I want you guys to spend all week commenting and posting and messaging <laughs> the crazy bitches talk page on Facebook so that we have topics you want to hear about. Yes, please. All right. You're yeah. bored with these topics. Give me a topic to talk about and we'll talk I'd about love it. To do it. <laughs> yeah. It'll give us time to research them and, and 
form our own opinions if we're not educated on it. You know we will. <laughs> and I think that'll be good because, like, everybody's got different stuff. But And also, we're by the way, if you send – because I, I handle all of the messages and all the stuff for the page. Uh, if you send me any questions – or us, any questions or topics you want to talk about – and you don't want me to mention you, then just say, please keep it anonymous. And I will not mention who it is. I am also ordained Minister Malloy. It's such a weird thing, and I'm getting used to it. But um, so I truly believe in the, the, the fact of confessional. So when you say, I don't want anybody to know my story or know that this was me suggesting it, I probably won't even tell Jess. <laughs> Good. That's fine with me. If it's a topic, I don't need to know who it's from. I'll uh, I'll research it, I and get an opinion opposite, over it, or hopefully. if you want me to mention that you asked it, I'll make sure I do. Okay, so it really is up to you. But I want the topics that you want us to talk about. Just wants to talk about the stuff that you want to talk about. Yes. Plus, they'll give you more an opportunity to join in on the conversation yourself instead of just listening. Because listening's cool, but talking's more fun. Yeah. And if there's an, you know, a topic that you need answers to or an opinion about, it's really important that you get, you know, people that are live or, or just talking amongst themselves or just expressing what's in their mind other than reading a forum on, on online. So I, I feel I would, in my opinion, I would, um, I would prefer asking a question and then hearing what two people could feel about it, where I might have a different perspective on me, and that could give a uh, uh, perspective uh, on it yeah. on it than I do, and that will help you navigate um, in your future endeavors. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And also, it's nice to also hear your point of views, even if they're different. Like I think if you've watched any of our episodes or any of this episode, you can see that. We're not the kind of people that are going to be like, oh, my God, you think like that? I, I like hearing all points of view because that helps open up my perspective and helps me be able to interact better with all the different types of personalities out there. I have a lot of social issues. Most people don't realize because I talk a lot, but that's part of one of the social issues is my anxiety comes out in ways of constantly talking and, and, and you know, trying to entertain in a lot of ways. But at the same point, there's lots of stuff where I don't know how to do or how to ask or what most people would do in any kind of situation. So if you go, oh, that's what I would do, I'd be like, oh, cool, shit. At least now I have something in that file folder for when exactly. that comes up to me or like, if somebody brings it to my attention, be like, oh, you know, that's I didn't experience it. But, you know, somebody had told me because, that's you know, I, I never give names. I'll always say somebody told me or somebody said um, unless they tell me I could say. <laughs> but it helps because then I might know how to do something either better or have a better mechanism or something I've never even considered. And now your voice gets to be heard as well. And I think that's essential. Silence and isn't bold and it's deadly. Always uh, understand that being a human being is difficult and we need each other to make it through. So um, I believe both Aren and I have gone through the ringer. We've been through um, some dicey things and um, we've been on both sides of the coin in some situations and we aren't here to judge. We are here to help and, you know, take advantage of it. Right. Seriously. I mean, especially since you and I, you know, we do have different lives we've lived. So no matter what, our advice might be similar, but you might have a technique for somebody who isn't so in your face like I am and have a better way of like a softer approach where even I might be like, shit, I'm going to try that. Like, because I know I come off very difficult or hard or you know, gruff in a lot of cases to some people, you know, that, that defense wall where in a lot of cases I don't have better mechanisms. I don't know better. So like I'll yeah. watch, you know, friends of mine or, you know, how you'll do something and go, okay, that worked for her. Let me see if there's a way I can utilize that 
in my own kind of Loren way. Yeah, of course. Uh, coping mechanisms are difficult unless you have uh, t- difficult to come by, uh, unless you have a therapist who could teach you step by step on on how to deal with a certain situation. Um, and if that therapist even identifies with how you feel comfortable coping, so you know, come out, talk to us, um, join the ask crazy us questions, and, and hopefully we can help. You know, make things easier for you guys. Very or true. Clearer. Can I just say, I wanted a sip of water because of cotton mouth, and I almost picked up this. <laughs> yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> I was like, uh huh. It's oh. similar. It looks similar. You know, right? like, the same colors. Especially since you know, I'm trying to do one of those like when you're driving a car and you're reaching in your pocket. Uh, I'm like, I just want a sip of water. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a can of Raid. Let's not yeah, do that. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> I sprayed Raid in my room once so bad. I was afraid to, like, spark my lighter. I was like, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do something about them spiders, Carol. <laughs> I know. Actually, funny enough. Okay, so I have those glue traps because yes. the rest of the basement is actually the problem there's foundation cracks where they're getting in and there's no way to to fix it enough blah 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 it's not my place i can't blah blah blah. so (laughs) around where my door is there's literally this u shape (laughs) of glue traps that i have to step over because at least it helps by the way so the spray doesn't work i usually go right in the cracks like right in the doorway there's no way because in my old house they're ants son of a bitches used to come up the crack Mm -hmm. and then like in the seam of my molding and then down the seam of the 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 bar molding that's like in the middle of the wall i'm like how these bitches get in it was like crazy so i had to like every seam on the door around the door had to get (laughs) true just listening to you ladies lift my spirits um i just don't want to ignore them when not ignoring you but um yeah, but I can't because it's the same kind of thing. Literally, the the heater vent I've had bugs fall out of because nothing's sealed up properly in the house. It's not my house. There's nothing I can You're do right. to yeah. make allowances. One, of, but it's funny because I have like this whole glue strip, you know, <laughs> semi ring. So the reason they even say it is it gets even funnier. So I am perfectly capable of stepping over these multiple levels of rings that I built because if there's spider crickets, they jump. So you can't just. Oh my them. God. They're so but crazy. Looking. Yeah. So I have like DEF CON one level of like, no, and then you put all of these <laughs> and you connect them in a row. And then like, so anyway, and it works, but we had to get the house reappraised or whatever it was for whatever it was where the guy comes in and takes pictures and whatever. And the motherfucker doesn't seem to ever look down because he never noticed the glue strips. Did he step on them? <laughs> he stepped on them with his shoes. Got That's out of his shoes off. Stepped on more with his socks. <laughs> Sorry. <I> have, <laughs> my mother is just standing there like hyperventilating. <laughs> He's and, like tap shoes. He's like. She's over 70, but like, this is so funny. She's so, she's like holding on to part of the groove strip, trying to pull it off. <laughs> so, I mean, holding on to the. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guy. My girl is crazy <laughs> down here. She's like, can I do something? He's like, no, I might have to throw them out. Yeah. I don't think my oh wife my is going to let me come back in the house with them. He had to take his socks off. He's got to put some baby powder on the bottom of his shoes. So funny. And, like, mom's, like, all upset. And my first statement out of my mouth, which I know he heard, was, motherfucker is incapable of looking down. You never look at your feet. And mom was like, oh. I'm like, see? Different perspective. Because also, one of my exes did it. And we had a whole laugh over it. But a woman has never done it at my house. I'm sorry. That says that something to me. That says <laughs> Watch, something. I'm going to be like the first one. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. At least two men went first because the unobservant <laughs> level of it is like, and by the way, I can find one and send a picture and show you or next show. How big it is it? White with green or bright red, like, All right. on okay, them. That was on a bad. very dark gray cement Yeah. Floor. That the lights so on. There is no fucking way. If you look down, even a smidge, you don't <laughs> notice the motherfuckers. 
So the fact he stepped on them, and then it was like a Mexican hack dance of stepping <laughs> on more, while my mother's going, oh, no, wait, now you're going to step on them. No, oh, no. <laughs> and and then you should just put some music on so he could tap dance for you. Like, so we had the guy before him who literally was helping me do something. And I was like, careful, huh? Stepped all over and we're pulling on the shoe. <laughs> and then I replaced all of them. And this, of course, so much time had gone by. But, like, I've had plenty of female friends, family, workers, whatever, in my house. Not a single one. Nobody did it. We looked down at our feet occasionally. Ah, <laughs> Just <yeah>. like <laughs> Maybe he was blinded by your beauty. He was like, ooh, this girl's cute. Oh, uh, no, I actually was like thing. fat against a side wall. I was like, I can't look at this dude right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> he had to go in my room. So, like, immediately, like, he had to go in my entire space, like, because it's part of the house, you know? Like, it's it's literally my entire apartment is mine. My mom is on a, you know, it's like a mother-daughter house. So, like, oh, right, right, right. a random dude is coming into my space. I can't work at all because he needs to take pictures of my fucking place, measure stuff, acting like it's not on any of the property stuff, which I know it is because I've read the documents. So I'm just like, why is the motherfucker taking this many pictures of my room? Ah, why are you taking measurements of a room? Did that's, you have any document? panties out, girl? I could have. I have no idea. Like, I just said, fuck it at one point. I have better shit to do. Like, if he, like, honestly, I hope he didn't steal any. I feel bad for his wife. Um, she had to buy a new shoe and hear him complain. I mean, whatever. <laughs> could you imagine? How did she say, they ruined my shoes? Because some guys have big problems. Like, I actually got into, like, a fist fight with one of my exes years and years ago. Like, high school, college days. You know, stupid mm -hmm. shit where you date, like, real bad people. And, like, He's like, my shoes are fucked up. And I literally was so done. I just went, you think that's bad? And literally, like, scuffed his shoe up with my, my stiletto heel. And it was like Timberlands. I was like, how, now, how about now? Do you like them better or are they worse now? It looks like they're more fucked up than the little stuff. Should have been like, boop, boop. <laughs> and we no. just started drawing in the street. <laughs> you fucked up my Timberlands. I'm oh, like, get we out. went at it. Like, we Go went at home. it. I won. He cried. I still bought him new shoes. That's who I am. Girl, I would have done the same thing. I hate right. us. I didn't even ruin his shoes in the first place. I he hate really us. was walking and then blamed me for him not looking down again because he was looking at me and got mud on his Tim's and blamed me because I wanted to go for a walk. I'm like, Yo, you have some way. crazy fucking jerks. I mean, I've been to, with people like slightly to that degree. But yeah, mine's always a whole. That's nightmare. it. That's it. And those are the mellow well, stories. Like, if, that like you were telling me the other day. Oh, I'll ask my man if I if, if that I need help, and they'll come at me like, "How dare you interrupt yeah. me on what I'm doing?" Yeah, for sure. Get the fuck. I, I mean, I had one ex. He had proposed just so we wouldn't break up, and then he tried to punch my face in, but I moved quick enough, so he got his fist stuck through the door, and then I, I did some stuff opened the door, called for some of my homeboys that were downstairs. I'm like, look what this stupid fucker did! We had Girl, to off. I, had I to am so on. fucking sorry that you have to endure that shit. It's my own fault. So I see what happens is, you know, most people are like, why did you date these pieces of shit? Because you, you, you know, we have how, faith in them. We have faith in them. more than that. Them. It's also because you got to remember how often I lived and hung out at trap houses taking care of people. Oh, in a trap house scenario... The person I would date, let's say, in that whole environment would be somebody taking care of everybody else also, yeah. like the best of the bunch in a way. Right. And then that's still not <laughs> good enough if, you know, that it, it not like in a worst I thing, know what you're saying. who I am in a relationship thing. So it starts out like, yeah, we're, we're doing this together. We're taking care of, you know, you know how many houses I took care of where the parents and all the adults were so trashed on heroin and the kids were under the age of five and there could have been eight of them? Like... I was. I had infants where I was feeding and changing diapers, making sure adults were breathing, and making that's sure other kids were doing homework. And I was in, high school. um, like I'm that's sorry. like, I and it, I was fine with it because one, it was still better than being around my father. I had no problem being the tough guy because I'm going to protect these children, even though other people can't. And I could always make sure that everyone stayed alive. You know how many people I had to bring back? That's why I think Narcam is such a big deal and such a thing that every ambulance should have. 
and most don't. You literally will have to tell them that they're ODing to get the right ambulance 95% of the time. Otherwise, they show up and have to call another ambulance. That's fucked. That's not, I'm not blaming the firefighters and the EMTs because it's all volunteer on the island. We're literally volunteer on the island. The amount of bullshit that is for me. Because I dated a firefighter. So not only are you running into burning houses, saving lives, but then you still got to go work another job just to pay the bills to do that. And the money never goes to like, let's put Narcan on every ambulance. It's more like, oh, we got everybody a bar or we got everybody like an entertainment center. And I know they need stress relievers and I'm not, <clears throat> but like fucking pay these people. They would already be at the station. They That's would be getting true. to the places faster. They would be safer. Yep. Like, you know how many people like love that work in these, like, and then you'll have people that work in the city and you know, they got a salary and they have health insurance and you know, yeah. whatever. It's the same job. Why are we it going is. Well, it is. for volunteer? I mean, I was dating the man who was working in the shoe department at me, uh, like JC Penney's or something. But, you know, five minutes before that, he was in a burning building, almost dying to get like a child out or something. He was a piece of shit who actually cut my tires, brake lines once. But like he saved lives. <laughs> OK, so like still dated shitty people, but that was based on the scenario, the situation. You know what I mean? Like, but in each situation, these people were like okay at first because we were working together as friends when i need to put them in a relationship category i had to learn is such a different thing of what i need like i am such a different person in a relationship you can't just suddenly be like macho man and telling me what's going on that's not happening i don't mind somebody leading and i follow but when i say no i don't want to go that direction and you try to pull me I'll break your fucking arm and kill you with the fucking arm and still go in the other fucking direction going, hey, boys, I'm single. Like, <laughs> let's go. Like, I literally, I broke up with what that guy's name was, and I literally was driving home. I was on, like, George Washington Bridge, stuck in traffic, and I typed, just lost 150 pounds by breaking up with a douchebag or something like that. I think it's still on Facebook somewhere. Because, like, that's how done it was because he was like, no, I said so. And I was like, Oh, you forgot how this works. This is, I agreed with you, so that's what we're doing, not. Yeah. <laughs> what part of this did you forget? Like, but that's all a learning process. So, in every one yeah. of those situations, I was in awful situations which made me look bad, but I knew I was taking care of people. But that also made me choose horrible people and live through awful stuff that truly well, caused part I, of my PTSD. I think that. Uh you and I have something in common where we're, we are wounded healers. Mm -hmm. Um, I, like I said, I, w I got my, my Zodiac chart read and that was mm -hmm. one of, that was my like purpose. Did or, she tell you what your rising and your moon yes. sign were? Yes. What are, what are your, what's so, your sign and rising? I am a Cancer Virgo Gemini. Which one's sun? I am a cancer is sun? um no 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 cancer sun is that correct and then which one you didn't actually say any words with it oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, okay so um I'm born in July so I'm a cancer okay. um I, with your moon and then I'm a Virgo okay and then all I am like Gemini throughout almost all of my houses that's hilarious no wonder we get along um I'm Libra sun Taurus moon and Capricorn rising. So I, I love Capricorns. Capricorns are like my fucking jam. I don't know why. I, I just, well, uh, obviously Taurus is, you know, is, is very, um, my grandmother was a Taurus. She practically raised me. I understand them. I, I love them. I, I, whatever. So I, um, and the Libra is balancing and I have Libra somewhere in, in one of my houses, but I was married to a Libra for 14 years. Yeah. They're beautiful humans. You know, I need that balancing because some of my, my like cancer and, ver and um, Gemini, it's like I'm black or white with things. It's mm -hmm. like all or fucking nothing. And that's, that's why crazy. Libra is a bad choice for you, my love. That's why, I, because Libra men and Libra women are a different breed. I just body. feel like he helped me understand life yeah. in a way that I wouldn't be able to navigate now 
if I didn't have him in my life. He really helped me understand with, you know, calming my voice. Like I used to be able to, I used to get into a, a conversation with someone and the more passionate I got, the louder my voice got, yeah. you know, and it would just be just all over the place. Just yeah. so extreme. And he helped me understand, you know, where the balancing is. That's awesome. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. And, you know, Libras, you know, in a way, definitely do that. Like one of my best friends growing up, uh, Chris Gomes, he was a Libra. So we were Libra twins. Uh, you know, that not our same birthday, but I don't remember what his was. It was like beginning of the month, I think. Doesn't matter. Uh, and we would basically go everywhere together. You know, we even found like, like an unmarked grave together once. Like it was crazy. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> you know, it, but there's no way there would be no way that me and him could date because of not similarities, but like incompatibilities. See, them. I needed the adventure. Yeah, that's the Gemini and Virgo in me. Like, I why you're part that. of the that you have. I know. I want to get up, but no, I need that adventure. I need that extra oomph. Mm-hmm. When someone's too balanced for me, I get, get bored. bored. <laughs> yep. And, yeah. and 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 there's nothing wrong with being mainstream and level all the time, but there's something about life that I want to feel. I need to feel. I love the roller coaster. I just do. Even yeah. the sad times, I feel like I just need them. <laughs> You're so adorable. <laughs> you, and the reason you need them is part of the Gemini stuff with the. But. I mean, it's not always great, but just to get that cry out or just to get yeah. that screaming out, you know, obviously in a car alone. But it's so Sometimes therapeutic, man, people. just to get that shit out. When I'm yeah. like constantly balancing and keeping that shit in. That is destroying me from the inside yeah. out. And that's it. Yeah. I'm done for it. <laughs> but it's also, that's not balancing. That's, that's. Suppressing. Yes. That's the right word. It's also because as an empath that you are, the sponge thing needs to stop for you. Because uh, bal- the fact that you put balance as basically sponge is where you need to oh, definitely start looking into Good, it. good observation. That's why talk therapy works. Listen, girl. Hey, and you know, it's another one of those things. Like, I talk to myself all the time. Like, (laughs) you're like, three of me is talking to one of me. Seriously. (laughs) Do you know, like, I literally saw a therapist once because I was talking in third person sometimes. Like, she's like, um, and then I realized. You know what? I don't find that, like, disturbing. But I realized it's because all of my life, you know, as the weirdo I, I was, I didn't have invisible friends. I didn't have imaginary friends. I had spiritual team members from the very beginning. Whether I understood what it was or not, I people would be like, who's your imaginary friend? And I literally would say, I don't have one. I couldn't make one up. But here I am always talking to invisible people that I could hear in my head. So yes, they tried to put me on medicine. But what it is, is my spiritual team and I talking. So like, I could be in a car. <laughs> it looks like I must be on a phone conversation. because First thing in the music. Just go like this while you're talking to them. <laughs> and people will be like, oh, she's getting down. <laughs> Part of the reason I do it, though, is because of how alone I always was. I was always sick or I was always stuck in, like, my room. So I was always either in a hospital bed basically by myself or, like, closed in my bedroom by myself because I was always so sick. So, like, that's a lot of, like, the formative years because the first time I ever got sick with asthma stuff and they brought me to the hospital, I was, like, two. So there's a lot of stuff there that causes you to have, like, alone issues. And I realized... Um, the last major relationship I had where we were like living together, it was difficult because all of a sudden there's another person that kept being like, is that me? No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> None wow. of that was to you. Technically, I keep forgetting there's another person here and I'm not supposed to talk about that. <laughs> like, because I spent all of my life really, you know, being inside my head or talking to whomever, whether it's real or not, to other people. I mean, about the fan thing, before we even started our show. Remember oh, my this God. Fan? Okay, so literally, everybody, we are we always start the show a little early because we want to make sure audio is working, lights working, everything, lights, sound, camera, action. Um, 
And I normally always have a rotary, you know, oscillating fan on in my room. It helps bring the bad old air from the basement out through the uh, exhaust fan I have in my window. The reason I'm bringing this up and saying all of that is we're sitting at the, here about to start our show and my fan that was off literally clicks on and off by itself to the point where I was like, just <laughs> You can't see it because there's no fan here. It's like literally like all the way over there because it needs to be out the window, not behind me. Otherwise, it'd be, you know, like that. So, uh, literally happens all the time, though. And it's, it's not the same kind of on and off. So literally it was somebody, in my opinion, on my spiritual team that was like, bitch, you know, you need the fan on. <laughs> At first, she was like, maybe they put the fan on because there's a fan in the room of the show. There's a fan of the show in the room. And then she was like, oh, wait, I'm smoking. I need the fan to go out the window. That's why they put the fan on. <laughs> I had to get the pun out first. I'm like, they're a fan of the show. And then was like. I feel like they wouldn't waste the energy for that. Right, right. But then she made sense of it and then it made yeah. sense. And sometimes that's really all it is. Like, I, you know, we've talked about it before where, you know, something weird will happen and it's like, what the fuck? And then it makes sense to me because like the fan thing, this room gets entirely too hot with the lights that need to be on for you guys to see me. So the fan needs to be on no matter what. And the fact that I had forgotten because I was rushing around because I just got home from Aaron. <laughs> And it literally, you can hear a beep, by the way. So there was like a beep, and the fan started moving, and then beep, and then just stopped. And I was like, just like, <laughs> real. It wasn't like, the fan went on. No, it was like, Jews. She had literally, she was like, someone's in here. <laughs> I was like, what? She was even sitting here, and like, I realized also that there's no way you anybody can see the fan that's like over there. So like, <laughs> I felt like like amazed balls. I was by it, and then it was like, oh, that's why halfway through shows, I'll realize and I'll turn a fan on and be like, oh, I'm sucker, because yeah. it's like, overheated with this direct light in my face. So it's another one of those weird like that happened. <laughs> that happened. But every show that we have, something weird happens. Like there's interference or like, it's. Uh, she's you know everybody knows. Oh. Well, I don't know if everybody knows, but Loren is sensitive in that way. And uh, she is able to, you know, she gets notified by people from the other side or someone passing through. So um, the last couple of shows, I was, uh, I was made, um, made aware of that, that it was like, for sure, for sure. And uh, this was just the one thing that happened. And it's funny because people all of a sudden are like, I want to talk to my grandma. I'm like, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Like, ah. For you, for you. Yeah, absolutely. But um, I was getting <laughs> interference last week and I'm like, why do, I, why do I hear somebody playing like a video game? And then I, I was just pretending I didn't hear it. And I was like, Red, is something going on over there on your side? And you're like, nothing's going on. My so there's always yeah. something going on. So next week, we'll tell you what happens before the show because I'm sure something will happen paranormal. Right. And we, we are starting a new show, the Happy Horrors Productions team. We are starting a paranormal show. Um, on my YouTube channel, I have put... Um, abandoned or haunted, so you could look for those videos. And it isn't anything where we I did any investigations. We really just kind of walked through one of my local um, abandoned slash haunted um, places, and tons of stuff happened for me. Tim, hello, Tim. <gasps> Hi. Hi. So uh, I'm so happy you joined. And it's funny because we're literally talking about paranormal, and Tim has a paranormal building in his background. Tim, what building is that? The picture is so small for us on the screen right now because it's so much further away while we're recording. Um, can you, Tim Conwell, please tell us what building you are standing in front of? Behind? In front of. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I lost my wording for a second. Um, but we are, you know, going to start investigating some places and things like that and not doing the same old, same old as everybody in a way, 
um, more leaving it up to people's devices, but also in a lot of cases, it's going to be whatever winds up happening because you know me, Jess, you know, I'll say one thing and then the fan will start by itself and it's like, <laughs> okay, I guess we're talking about that. You never get used to it. Huh? No, I never do. Never. <laughs> oh, Tim, Rolling Hill Asylum. Yes. I've been wanting to go there. Where's that Ooh, now? Yeah. Where is that one again? I'm trying to remember where that one's located. It's just, I, I feel don't... like I've been there for a modeling shoot. I feel like you were. <laughs> I had a really good one. It was so decrepit. Get you down where? <laughs> to the place I went to? It's Kings Park Sanitarium. You're not really supposed to go in. So let's delete Ooh. that out. We're not going to. Because we're, uh, <laughs> we're live. Um, but yeah, like... Um, Jess, you and I talked about how we're going to check out that church where you yes. were filming last time because I feel like there's stuff. And one of the places we're filming this weekend for the Devil's Lettuce um, is definitely got some activity going on. I've already um, perusaled is a fun word, perusaled <laughs> uh, the location. And we're not filming there because it's haunted we're filming there because um the person is allowing us and it's really cool and it's like a hundred years old so anything a hundred years old seems like why wouldn't it have at least some interesting energy um so it's gonna be a lot of fun to film at and then i'm hoping that we can get back there and do like an investigation i i, I don't like that word i feel like ghost adventures ruined it for everybody with some of the the phrasing hey and listen i, like I that love those stuff, shows but. There's a few that I know not to watch. Buffalo, New York. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah. Okay, that's why. We have Buffalo friends. Oh, <laughs> there we, <go>. <laughs> we have Buffalo friends. We met them at Harvest Fest. Oh, by the way, Loren, Harvest Fest, New York, October 9th Ooh, weekend. I, that sounds exciting. I we are... Know. We're helping out. We oh, yeah. um, we help set up and everything, so we get the weekend for free. If you want to yes. jump on with us, yes. we'll talk about it later. Yes. So Buffalo, <laughs> New York, yes. We met friends there, and they are great friends, and we held them tightly. We met them last October. We've seen them five times since then. They're seven hours away. Wow, yeah, they are. Great friends. Love Buffalo. Buffalo's great. And uh, Tim and I did a con, a few, uh, at least one or two conventions together, Tim. Uh, he's an awesome dude. Tim, um, please uh, message me if you'd like to be on the Let's Party with Loren game show season two. We're starting yeah, to build every our Thursday. List. Yep. Uh, right now we have season one that um, we have up on the Let's Party with Loren page on Facebook as well as YouTube where you could rewatch season one. We will be starting season two, uh, 2021. So we're asking anybody who'd like to be a guest on the game show. Um, please let me know. Cause it's a lot of fun. We do a lot, a lot of fun, stupid little games, laugh a lot, have a drink. And then you get to talk about you. And I post the link so people can learn about you too. That way gets more people to see who you are and what's going on with you. Yay. Yes. And say, yay, sure. All right. All right. Yay. All right. Definitely message me because right now we're about film. We're about to start filming for uh, the devil's lettuce this weekend. So my brain is super filled with only that. So if I find a message from you, I will, will remember and make sure I, I um, book you for the uh, show for sure. So yay, that'll be awesome. Um, but I, you know, I think it'll be a lot of fun to just be going to these different places. Like you'll see on YouTube with the abandoned or haunted, there's more than one video on there from that place where it's either pictures or video. But like one time I went and literally my friend got like his shirt pulled and he was like, oh, so you could see it. Like it was really, ah! cool. so there's lots of stuff on my YouTube channel. Please, you know, feel free to, you have to uh, put a circle fun. of protection around me. I am so afraid of bringing things like that home oh i, just, I won't allow you to bring it because i have so much light and i don't want them to be like i'm gonna attach to her because no well first of all it's hard enough as it is first you know? of all before you even get to the property on friday both you and al are gonna say i reject any negative entities i'll tell you stuff to say whatever feels okay. right but like part of it is always standing in your power okay. of it like, I figured you that. when i say my house i am like Nothing is allowed here because this is my home. You and are not allowed to be yeah. attached to me. Yeah. Dumb. 
yeah. area. That kind of stuff. When you start off with that versus, oh, I don't want to bring something home. No, 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 no. What no. do we say That's about my, the with the Right. Universe? The universe doesn't hear the not. It just hears the regular words. I understand. No, definitely. So I won't be like that. No, you'll I will be definitely be on, on top of it. This is I'm something not I'm not me. allowed. Not allowed. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, I, I'm already going to make sure everybody's fine. Um, you know, it might be like he wrote, he wrote something very smart, and he's <laughs> absolutely fucking correct. You can bring something home from the grocery store. Like, there's literally that no is so true. I to adopt I you love to I house. Love anyway. you guys. You bring so, like things that I just don't fucking think about. Yeah, most people. And it's so simple, right? Sometimes, like, you hear things a hundred times, or you say it to yourself a hundred times, you just hear it from the right person, or you just fucking hear it, and you're like... Thank you, Tim, for Duh. just coming up to the show. Thank you, Tim. Sure. Duh. You're so I, right. I, people, please you're right. look up Tim Conwell. I'm going to put his comment back up so you can look him up and see his profile picture. He's pretty fucking epic. Check him out. He definitely knows what he's you fucking out, talking about. Tim. Um, he is an absolute sweetheart so do not worry about like him being a jerk because there's a lot of jerks out there and i don't talk to jerks anymore so i'm still <laughs> talking to him so you know it's fine i said anymore aren't you proud of me <gasps> uh, say authenticity all the way i'm not <laughs> but he's absolutely fucking right guys like people are that's true, like, oh, that's that's true. That's true. Haunted, or oh yeah I'm yeah yeah you like, know what i feel like it is it's mainly like in the head i feel like if you yeah. go in there like oh it might attach to you easily yeah. if you go in there like that. So yeah, I don't go in the grocery <laughs> store necessarily to be like, but it's it. true. You still can. Yeah. I mean, I went to, a, I went, where was I? Fuck. I was in the middle of a lobby in a business tower building, whatever, one of those huge skyscrapers in New York City and motherfucking almost had something come back with me because anywhere you got to think about also the realization that if negative entities are a form of energy, since everything is the piece of furniture you're sitting on right now is made out of energy. Molecules are energy. Atoms are energy. So our human body is a form of energy. So if you think of a negative entity in the simplest way as a form of energy and you do nothing to clean it, why wouldn't it get worse? It's like having an illness and not taking care of it so you get Mercer. Ugh. Do you get where I am with it? And people yeah. don't really understand. So, like, I was watching the show Hotel Paranormal, and it's narrated by Dan Aykroyd, so that's fucking cool. Oh, I just saw you post that. I can't wait to watch it. Yes, it's on Travel Channel, and it's on Hulu. Um I, I, I only have Hulu, so I have Hulu Live, so that's the only reason I, don't, I know it's on Travel Channel because it's always in the corner. They're smart with their marketing. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, but it's a show about hotels only where there's been all sorts of entities and et cetera. And one of the things he had said is you got to think about it. Some of these places, they're much older than a standard house, but whether they are or not, you have a huge majority of people coming in and out of the same space all the time yeah you know what i'm saying so it's not yeah. like one family that lived there for 40 oh, years right 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 I see what coming saying. in you're in a hotel think about the turnover rate how many yeah. people are here now you do 40 years how many That's people the went there because they're fighting with their spouse <laughs> so the reason that when people come into my hotel room like you have you'll see that I'm burning sage in there, sage incense or Palo Santo, because I'm in somebody else's, how many people slept in this room? We're not even talking about bacteria right at this point. We're talking about them leaving something there because that something could feed off more people in a hotel. Mm -hmm. So I'll make sure I cleanse that fucking room. And then it's funny, I'll find a maid that I know is going to be cleaning while I'm there. Just so you know, that smell is Palo Santo or sage. When you go to clean the room and you see all that shit in the cup, that's what it is. And I always leave like the tube out. Cause like if I was like the main cleaning and you just smell it or you see all this stuff, you're going to be like, Oh, what is it? <laughs> Cause when it's sitting in a pile, it's ashes. And I have lived and stayed in some very, very seedy 
motels where I, you know, you get five months for, you know, a hundred bucks or something. So like I, I've seen rooms where there's literally ashes and they're not incense. Okay. That's insane. So my mind has seen <laughs> way too much. So that's why I always go to one of the maids and be like, listen, and they're like, oh, that's fine. I figured, no problem. They're like, thank you, by the way. I'm like, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. That's why wherever I stay, I make sure the first thing I do when I put the luggage down is, like, you know, I get that out and make sure it's burning in the room at least to start working on that energy. Sometimes all of a sudden the energy changes and I know I affected something that's in the room, which means there is some kind of negative energy or entity that needs to be removed. You know, then it's like, all right, well, at least I wasn't sleeping when I discovered this moment. <laughs> That's happened. We went to Macabre Film Fest on Long Island, um, LC's event, the Twitch Twitch yeah. production. And everybody was staying in this hotel. And um, it's partially my fault, I guess, because I was giving out uh, The Very Devil Herself and The Storyteller of Pain books, and there is some interesting topics in there. And one of the women were reading it, and all of a sudden, her phone that she purposely disconnected from the wall started ringing <clears throat> and she's like running to me she's like <laughs> I was like, oh yeah that kind of stuff happens she was like no <laughs> i was like did you sage the rare <laughs> no like you know common sense no um because most people don't even think that stuff works they think it's just all bullshit so you know that's why i bring up like the energy and the molecules and the frequency science of it and like einstein once said science and spirituality are just two sides of the same coin you know so on that note, we are now at two hours, so we're going to call it a night. Oh, no. I know, right? It's been two hours of Crazy Bitches Talk Show. Good. Thank I you have for to joining pee. me. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining me, Jess. Thank you, everyone, for joining thank us. Thank you, guys. It was awesome to hear from you. Right? Make sure you put your comments and uh, let us know what topics you want for next Tuesday. Yes. It's Tuesday, so we will see you next Tuesday, folks. Bye.